Back in 1891, Dr. William Collin, considered the father of cancer immunotherapy, made the first attempt to stimulate the immune system for improving a cancer patient's condition by intratumor injections of inactivated streptococcus pyogenes and serratia marcescens. Here's a little timeline of events after this discovery. As regards the mRNA investigation, it was until 1995 when a group of scientists of the University of Alabama developed an innovative project in which they use this molecule for the creation of an effective vaccine against tumor cells. However, research in this field had never had a promising future due to the lack of funding. Now, in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, many researchers from all over the world have decided to turn up this type of vaccine to fight against COVID-19 infection. Thanks to them, mRNA vaccines have been brought into the limelight, becoming an important research field in order to use them as a treatment in patients affected by other pathologies. From a DNA template, cells are able to transcribe it into mRNA, which are later translated into proteins. Thus, it consists of a strand of mRNA that encodes a specific antigens of a disease. In fact, the so-called tumor-associated antigens have become the target of many of these vaccines due to their increased expression in tumor cells. However, special care must be taken in their use, because they may also be present in healthy tissues of the individual, which could generate an autoimmune response. This is why tumor-specific antigens, which are expressed only on tumor cells, are often used instead, being a more accurate target. There are three types, non-replicating, self-replicating, and cell-derived non-replicating dendritic. Into the next question, do you think that the route of administration of these vaccines can influence effectiveness? Well, the answer is yes. The route of administration can greatly influence outcomes. We have to highlight two of them. The intradelmar route has been widely used for mRNA cancer vaccines because a wide variety of antigen-presenting cells result in the scheme. On the other hand, we have the intranodal administration. Direct mRNA injection into secondary lymphoid tissue increases the speed of the immune response. Also, there are some factors that can affect the effectiveness. The level of the expression of antigen in professional antigen-presenting cells, the migration of dendritic cell to secondary lymphoid tissue, and the ability of the vaccines to activate strong T-cell and B-cell responses. Advantages over other vaccines. Safety. RNA vaccines are not made with pathogenic particles or inactivated pathogens, so they are not infectious. Efficacy. The first results of clinical trials indicate that these vaccines generate a reliable immune response and are well tolerated by healthy individuals, with few side effects. Production. If we use a standardized size process, vaccines can be made more quickly. Therefore, we must continue to investigate and do our bit, as did the biotech company. They tested the effectiveness of one of the vaccines they devised and affirmed that mRNA is a very revolutionary technology with great potential to fight diseases such as cancer or malaria.